Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it has been a three year hiatus, and I can just quickly explain that by being a medical student during COVID has been quite the journey. I've been wanting to make videos ever since my senior year of undergrad just to revive the channel, but I've never got around to actually doing it. And so today I am back in full swing and, and we are excited to announce that we're going to be regularly updating videos and we're going to stay true to our undergrad roots and we're going to make sure that we upload undergraduate videos. Uh, we're hoping to do MCAT sections, kind of MCAT studying tips and tricks, uh, just anything that can be done in a bite-sized manner. And that's kind of the point of this channel is to make sure that we're giving you some tutoring, but it's so quick and, and easy and trying to explain this in at least a 10 minute interval if I can make these videos under 10 minutes if possible. But if I do go over, please do note that I do apologize. And we, if in the future people do like the extended videos, we can definitely go more in depth or have a series where we just kind of have 10 minute videos in series. I am open to all constructive criticism, feedback. And again, if you do like the channel and you want to see the additional videos, please hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe. Every and all subscribers are welcome. Everybody in the health field is welcome, as well as any science-related field that finds this uh, v finds the channel and the videos uh, particularly appealing and, and educational. Please come on in. We're open to everybody. So, without further ado, let's get started. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about some clinical medicine that uh, I find really fascinating. I love cardiology, and it's it's something that's really important, you know, especially even if you're in the ER as a ER physician or ERPA, whatever you uh, may find yourself being, or if you're just a you know you're a cardiologist, you're the uh, the internist at the time, you know, you need to know how to read the ECG pretty quick and easy, right? So that's what we're doing today. And again, whatever I say on this channel, please don't take as medical advice. None of this is medical advice. And this is all purely educational and for educational purposes. So without further ado, let's get started. What's the primary basic unit of the ECG? So it'd be the heartbeat, the heart beating in a normal synchronous fashion. If we, at all possible, we'd like it to be at a normal rate and normal uh, rhythm and a normal axis. And we'll go through what that means. Again, we're going to have a video on how to interpret the, each individual wave, segment, and complex, the QRS complex, the QT interval, the PR interval. We're going to have a, I'm going to drop the link once that video uploads after this one. And I put in the link of this video on the description down below, so please watch out for that. So, real quick, just remember that. The PR interval, the P wave, is the atria depolarizing. And then you have the QRS complex, which is where the ventricles are going into their own depolarization. And the atria are repolarizing at this time. So that's why you don't see the atrial repolarization, because it's hidden by the QRS complex, which is a ventricular repolarization, or depolarization, excuse me. You have the ST segment, another isoelectric segment right here. And then you have your T wave, which is a ventricular deep, uh, repolarization. Okay? Now, What's clinically relevant to us when we're talking about ECGs? What's really the most important thing is we're looking at the RR interval. This is the distance between the R waves. So this is the distance between one heartbeat and the other. And we're going to be able to find the heart rate from this. Again, another set of videos that we're going to be coming out with are myocardial infarctions, STEMIs, non STEMIs, a quick and easy way to go through those. Also, AV blocks. Those dreaded AV blocks, we're going to go through those quick and easy and see if we can get those down as well. How do we determine rate and rhythm? Remember that rate equals heart rate, counted in beats per minute. If the patient is in tachycardia, fast heart rate, it is going to be anything over 100 beats per minute. If the patient has a slow heart rate, if they're bradycardia, it is going to be under 60 beats per minute. And on the ECG, each one of the dark pink lines, dark almost red line, you're going to see is representative representative of an interval of 0.2 seconds between them. Each of the smaller, lighter lines that you see represent an interval of 0 0.4, 0 0.04 seconds. So what really, what's a good rule of thumb if you just need a rough estimate? You're going to count each dark line as 30, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, etc. Now, this is a what I gleaned from an exceptional resource, and I'm going to drop the link down to this website, the ECG library. It's a 
beautiful resource. I recommend everyone uh, go to this if you're looking to get some ECG practices. It's a wonderful resource that my uh, the cardiologist that taught me all of this uh, showed me. <coughs> Excuse me. And he showed me all about this website. It's an amazing website. And I got this full credit to them um, and the physicians that put that in place, uh, the people that put that in place. Um, and so when we're looking at an ECG and you just want to go right away, what's the rate? What's the heart rate of this patient? Look at the R wave. Which one is lining up with a dark red, dark pink line, right? So we're going to look at limb, uh, excuse me, that lead two. So when you're looking at lead two, this, this R wave, this QRS complex, this looks like it's pretty much on that line. This one, not so much, but it's about points, one of these little, little slight circles away. So it's about 0 0.04 seconds, right? So we're going to count it. So this is pretty rough, but we're going to go with it. So you're going to go to the second, the first dark line that you see to the right of that. So this is 300, 150, 175. So again, so we're going from the first R wave that corresponds to that, that lines up right on that uh, on that R, that dark, ride, dark red line, excuse me. I'm gonna go 300 beats per minute, 150 beats per minute, 100 beats per minute, 75 beats per minute. So we can conclude that this patient's around anywhere from 65 to 75 beats per minute. So maybe even 70 to 75 beats per minute if you wanna give the give a little take a little as my, uh, as a cardiologist that Tommy said. So again, when you're looking at uh, rhythm, this looks to be regular sinus rhythm. I'm not seeing any irregularities. I see a, a nice P wave, the PR, uh, PR interval and the PR segment are in a good shape. We're not seeing any PR interval that is over 0.2 seconds. Uh, and we're, we're, not, we're concluding there's no AV block. I'm not seeing any uh, supraventricular tachycardia. And I'm not seeing any uh, uh, VTAC or VTEC and I'm not seeing any abnormalities here, okay? So how do we determine axis? Remember that the leads are all looking at the, ac at the heart at different angles and that there's an axis for each lead. Normal axis is anywhere from zero to 90 degrees. It's this one right here. A left axis is anywhere from negative or zero to negative 30. That's a normal variant. So zero to negative 30, this is what the cardiologist had taught me. He said that these were pretty normal. He wasn't too worried about these, but anywhere after negative 30, now we're getting into a, a range that's probably a little abnormal in, in terms of the variant. So negative 30 to negative 90, this is your left axis deviation that you should be a little more concerned about to see what the pathophysiology behind that might be. Extreme right deviation is anywhere from negative 90 to negative 179, not really one negative, 180, so I do apologize for this, this was a little inaccurate, but anywhere in this area, so negative 120, negative 150 is usually the extreme right axis. This is very bad, the patient being in this range is not good, and you're going to want to make sure that the limb leads and the chest leads were all done correctly when you're doing this, okay? Um, and that's a little more advanced, but when you're looking at this, if it's negative 90 to negative 180, negative 179, excuse me, you're looking at an extreme right deviation. This is really bad. Again, left, uh, the right axis deviation is still positive, so it's 100 and 180, not the extreme right, just the regular right axis deviation. This is anywhere from about 100 degrees to 180. When you're looking at a basic ECG, it's gonna be layered like this. So it's gonna be leads one, two, three, leads AVR, AVL, AVF, and the chest leads V1 to V6. So honestly, whenever I look at the ECG and I'm just looking and the you know the question or the, the cardiologist, the attending resident, whoever is looking over and is saying like, hey, student doctor, can you tell me what the patient's uh, rate is and their rhythm and their axis? I look immediately to one, two, three, AVR, AVL, AVF. I'm looking at these three exclusively. I'm going to ignore the chest leads for now because they're not going to be as important for me now. There. In later videos, we're going to talk about why, when they come into play for me personally. Now, when I look at these guys, they're all going to correspond to this normal axis. I'm not going to go over this in depth, but this is a really good tool that you should draw out and really get down because this shows you every the normal QRS complex axis, and you can see the normal variance being included here, right, right axis deviation extreme right axis deviation and the left axis deviation. So you're going to look at all these leads and you're going to see lead one, lead two, lead three, AVF, AVR, AVL. Again, when lead one and lead two are in the normal axis, lead three is in the right extreme 
uh, deviated axis deviation. AVR is an extreme axis deviation. AVF is a positive 90 to negative 90, and zero to negative one, or it's zero to 180 is one. So that's actually the way that I just draw this out. It's really, really helped me to get down the specific number and the specific uh, axis uh, di degree for each of them. So when we're just looking for quick and dirty, we don't need the exact number, or we just need to know the axis. We don't really need to know the real specific uh, d degree. So when we're looking at the axis, you're going to want to look at the, the first lead. So that would be lead one. And you want to look at lead AVF. Are they both positive? If so, you can conclude that this patient has a normal axis. And if you don't need to know the exact specifics, which we're not going to go into on this video just yet, we're just going to say that is a normal axis from 0 to 90. If it is a left but normal variant axis, it's going to have a positive lead 1, negative lead AVF, and a positive lead 2. OK, now when we're looking at a left axis deviation, you're going to see a positive lead one, negative lead AVF, and a negative lead two, okay? But when we're looking at a right axis deviation, lead one is gonna be negative, but lead AVF is gonna be positive. Now you're looking at, an uh, at a right axis deviation when lead one is negative, but lead AVF is positive. At an extreme right deviation, lead one will be negative and lead AVF will be negative, okay? Now, just quick, before we get to the ECGs that I'm about to show you, the ECG library that I'm using this from, I've got a screenshot of it right here. Uh, full credit to the ECG library. Uh, all of these are online, fully on for display for anybody to uh, look through. You've got your AV blocks, your Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. Uh, you can look at pacemakers, ventricular rhythms, supraventricular rhythms. Um, and as well as, you know, you got the normal uh, electrocardiogram and then for the ischemic heart disease, which we're actually going to use these and kind of teach how to localize MIs in a later video. And so now we're looking at a video. And so remember what I said that you're going to look at lead one and lead AVR right off the bat. So you're going to look at how are they positive or are they negative? So obviously these are very positive. The R wave is coming right up. I'm seeing a full, very nice, obviously there's a lot of... Uh, artifact in here but again th this is a, a decent uh mi or excuse me not an mi excuse me we're not talking about mis but it's a decent ecg lead one is positive lead two or lead avf is positive we can conclude that this patient has a normal axis now again we're going to kind of line up oh perfect we got an r wave right here that lines up right on this on this line so just to calculate the rhythm let's go 300 150 100 75 and we're just a little over so this would be 60 between 75 a little closer to 75 so i'm going to say anywhere from 65 to 75 maybe around 65 to 70 okay so i'm thinking around 65 to 70 beats per minute normal axis this is a sinus rhythm patient's pretty healthy now this is obviously not a healthy ecg if for those of you that know how to read ecgs for those of you that don't do not freak out we will be in ready later videos recognizing how you can actually find out that this is not a uh, normal ECG. But this is actually a really good ECG to look at because it shows you what it looks like if a lead is positive and positive. So this person has a normal axis rhythm. We're going to look at this. We're looking at it right here, this R wave. It's positive. It goes right on to uh, this top, uh, this dark line. So 300, 150, 100. 75, here's 60, so this is a little closer to 60, so I'm going to say anywhere from uh, around 65-ish, 65 to 70-ish, so anywhere from 65 to 75, or 60 to 70, excuse me, 65 to 70, excuse me, but AVL is, I mean, it's not really registering, okay, but look at AVR, this is an example of a negative, negative lead, so if we were going through this, we could actually look at what's the most isoelectric, so I would, if you need to find the specific, here's where you find the specific uh, degree. Lead one is positive, lead AVF is positive. Okay, we know we're in the normal sinus range, axis. Normal axis, excuse me, just normal axis, not normal sinus axis, normal axis. So lead one, lead AVF, positive, zero to 90. We know it has to be zero to 90 in that degree. What's the most isoelectric? AVL, which, what is AVL perpendicular to? AVL is perpendicular to lead two. Okay, perfect. 
lead AVL is perpendicular to lead 2. Now, if lead 2 is positive, we know, going back to this area, that it's going to be positive 60. So we know that this axis is it's a normal 60 to 70, 65 beats per minute, likely, rough estimate, sinus rhythm, and that this patient has a normal QRS axis of positive 60. And again, how did I know to look for uh, limb lead or for uh, lead two? I look at the most isoelectric. I'm not really seeing much here. It's pretty flat, so I like to see that. Whatever, how, however, excuse me. If you want to see a patient who doesn't have really like a uh, very flat line, if they have an ECG, just look for the one that's most isoelectric. So if we're just going to ignore this and say that this looks like almost identical to AVF, let's just say that it looks like, like AVF. It's got some QRS complexes that we can see. Um, you could probably say that it would either be lead one or lead three that's uh, most isoelectric. So you're going to go from what, what is perpendicular to those. So I like to go in my head just knowing that one is perpendicular to AVF and three is perpendicular to AVR. So I draw an X in my head mentally. So three AVR perpendicular to each other, one and AVF perpendicular to each other, and then just a straight line because two and AVL are perpendicular to each other. You find the most isoelectric and you go perpendicular to that. So if three was the most isoelectric, we would go to AVR. And since AVR is negative, we would know that if AVR is negative, this is an extreme right extreme axis deviation. But because these are both positive, we're doing that quick and easy, we know that that's not the case, that this has to be a normal si normal axis, right? It has to be 0 to uh, 90. So perfectly lines up with this. That's why this method is really good. It's quick and easy. Just come in, go in, and say, what's the rate? What's the si uh, rhythm? And then go in and say, OK, I need to know the axis. Look at lead 1. Is it positive or negative? OK. Is it positive? It's positive. Lead AVF, is it positive or negative? This one, positive. We know it's zero. Going back, just real quick again. Positive, positive, it's a normal axis. Positive, negative AVF or positive lead two, normal left variant. Positive lead one, negative AVF and negative lead two, it's a left axis deviation that is now straight away from the normal variant. Now again, if lead one is negative, now you're knowing, now you know that you're in the right quadrants. Now, is lead AVF negative? If it is, it's an extreme right. But if it's positive, you're in the right axis deviation. And that, folks, is really all you have to know about the quick and easy method of how to get through the ECGs and how to get through just the real quick rate, rhythm, and axis. Really hope you enjoyed it. And again, as always, please leave a comment down below or anything that you'd like to see in the future. We're going to be making more videos, and I'm so excited to get the channel back up and running. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.